Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get some front page news. <laughs> Where we start, Yee? Um, well, let's see. I mean, there's so much going on today with inauguration, and I want to make sure we shout out Kamala Harris, the first woman ever to be vice president in the United States. Now, ahead of inauguration day and all the activities that start today, which we'll also break down for you, here's what Kamala Harris had to say. And for many months, we have grieved by ourselves. Tonight, we grieve and begin healing together. Though we may be physically separated, we, the American people, are united in spirit. And my abiding hope, my abiding prayer, is that we emerge from this ordeal with a new wisdom to cherish simple moments, to imagine new possibilities, and to open our hearts just a little bit more to one another. I had no idea that Kamala Harris spoke yesterday. I heard that briefly mentioned on one of the news stations yesterday that her and Joe spoke, but I didn't see it simply because, you know, they still making Trump the A story. And it shouldn't be that way today, okay? Today is Inauguration Day. Joe Biden going in should be the A story. Story. Kamala Harris, a uh, historic first for B- VP, should be the B story. And whatever Trump has done or will attempt to do today to keep the spotlight off of that, remember, you don't have to give him the attention he's seeking. Well, Joe Biden's first executive order will be a nationwide mask mandate. So he's addressing COVID-19 as one of the first things that he does. So that will direct the agencies to take action to require compliance with CDC guidance on mask wearing and physical distancing in federal buildings, on federal lands, and by federal employees and contractors. The president's also calling on governors, public health officials, mayors, business leaders, and others to implement masking, physical distancing, and other public measures to control COVID-19. They said it's not a political statement. It's about the health of our families and economic recovery of our country. Yeah. And so all you privileged, entitled white folks just know mass mandates are not oppression. OK, it's to stop the spread of COVID-19. <laughs> right? OK. True oppression is when everybody's not wearing a mask and you're concerned about yourself. That's oppressive to me. If you're not wearing a mask out in public and breathing all over me. All right. Now, on a typical inauguration day, obviously, there would be hundreds of thousands of people in D.C. Everybody goes. But this year, everybody has to stay away. They've been encouraging people do not try to go to D.C. As we told you previously, Airbnb canceled all reservations in D.C. But there are some things that you can join in virtually in addition to the broadcast of the inauguration and the swearing in ceremony. And some of those events, there's a DNC watch party. That's an online service for people to organize and host their own virtual inauguration watch parties. There's women and the vice presidency, because obviously we told you Kamala Harris is making history today. So the Demena Children's History Museum in New York City is hosting an online event for children of all ages to learn about what led to this historic moment. Uh, There is a Biden inauguration special that Tom Hanks will be hosting. It's called Celebrating America. Now, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are set to give remarks during the 90 minute television special. It'll also honor healthcare workers, teachers, other Americans who have worked during the pandemic. So that program will air at 8.30 p.m. Eastern today. But a lot of this you can watch on CNN. You can watch it streaming, Facebook, all of that. Yeah, nothing you mentioned sound like the food going to be hitting at any of those events. Nah, so every, I mean, and I, I, was I mean, it's hard. It's time. virtual. Yeah, but I just did Sorry, everything trash. you mentioned. I was like, the food sound like it's just going to be terrible at every single one <laughs> of those functions. You know Ugh. what event's going to be terrible today? What? Donald Trump's departure ceremony because he's doing this whole thing. And they said dozens of his current and former administration officials have been invited to his farewell ceremony today before all these activities happen. And it looks like a lot of people aren't going. They said they he was trying to invite any and everybody. Now, don't act like Trump don't be having <laughs> hidden ass food at his functions. OK, Trump keeps yeah, it Chick-fil-A. simple. Chick-fil-A, yeah, Chick-fil-A, Chick-fil-A, McDonald's. You know what I mean? McDonald's tried and true favorites that, mm-hmm. that can't fail us. All right. Yeah, they said because he's so toxic right now, even some of his own staff members and some of the uh, higher up administration officials aren't even trying to go. They even invited a lot of the junior aides who never personally interacted with Donald Trump. They said they're trying to beef up the guest list because a lot of people declined. Man, talk about the legend of the fall offs. 
You know what I'm saying? You know, when you hot, everybody all on you. You know what I'm saying? When you got the power, when you got the money, when all that gets taken away, you really get to see who your true friends are. Okay? That's the worst. You have a party and no one shows up? No, all is Chick-fil-A for nothing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you, and, you know, in addition to all that, they talk about Donald Trump's approval rating is 34%. His disapproval rating is 61%. And they're saying that is the lowest of his whole entire presidency and one of the lowest ever uh, for a president. I think in the past 70 years. And Melania Trump also is the worst. She has the worst popularity rating for any first lady at the end of her term in polling history. What Trump should have did is pardon these people earlier so they would be coming home today. And then so the people he pardoned could be at his departure party. That you got Little Wayne and Kodak Black, you know, headlining your departure party. You might have some mm. nice little Chick-fil-A Popeye spread. OK, now we got a party. Yeah, well, we'll talk about those pardons in Rumor Report. <laughs> All right. Well, that is your front page news. Now, uh, let's open up the phone lines. 800-585-1051. Everybody laughed at, at Lil Wayne when he wore that sweater, took a picture with Donald Trump. People were mad at him, wanted to cancel Lil Wayne. But now that he got pardoned, I see everybody saying fire emojis, the GOAT. The goat's coming home and all that other things. It was so funny. I seen people putting the flowers up, like, give him his flowers. Like, Jesus, y'all was just killing Wayne for taking this picture with Trump. Yep. Now y'all posting the picture with Trump and Wayne and celebrating. All right. So have have your thoughts changed? Let's let's talk. Let's open up the phone lines. If you were little Wayne, would you wear that sweater? Would you take a would picture? Would you wear that sweater? <laughs> <laughs> Why is that the sweater? first thing? Because that sweater just seems mad, mad weird. Would you wear that sweater? Would you take a, play, a picture with Trump and endorse him if you knew that you would get parted? Let's did open up. Endorse, I guess he did endorse him. I guess that was yeah, he, did. Yeah, that, bro, he endorsed him, bro. He wore a sweater. Took a picture with him at the White House. He wore the sweater. 800 585 1051. Let's talk about it. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. 